Hello, this is Unrendered. My name is Chester Connell, and our guest is Halima Dishang, PhD, lecturer at Cavill University in Barbados, UE, that is, Cavill Campus in Barbados, and we'll be chatting with her in a moment. Just before, I crave your indulgence to say something to you on a personal and professional note. I'd like to make some things uh, pellucidly clear. Uh, first of all, I am a host on this program sometimes, and sometimes I am a guest. Today, of course, I am the host, and I'd like to make it clear that I do not work for IKTV. I am not employed by IKTV. I am here as an independent journalist, a free agent. Uh, this program, Unrendered, uh, the rights holder to this program is Tony Regisford. He owns this program. He started this program. He is the founder, that is. And he's asked me to do this program as a favor to him, and that is why I'm here. Uh, I am also here because it gives me great pleasure to do this. Broadcast journalism is part of my passion. It's part of my purpose, in fact, for being here. And this is why I'm here hosting this program. I'd also like to say that while I have no contumelious disregard for any politician or political party, I bear no allegiance to any political party in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, or anywhere in the world for that matter. And I do this program without fear or favor to any political party or to any politician. I fear no politician and I fear no one, in fact. In fact, I do not fear death. And I do what I do professionally and personally without fear or favor to anyone uh, that I choose or do not choose. So uh, with that in mind, I'd just like to uh, say once again that I'm here to do this program on a professional basis and as a personal favor to Tony Redisford, who I might add is also doing me a favor by allowing me to host the program uh, which is of a certainly high caliber, which is also the, uh, what I'd like to say about our guest today, uh, Halima Dishong, a person of high caliber, a Vincentian, and uh, a person who is doing us proud in Barbados. Halima, after all that mouthful, uh, <laughs> let's get on with the program. Thanks for being here. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, let me, let me, let me uh, uh, go through another mouthful and uh, tell them about <laughs> y uh, you professionally. Uh, Dr. Halima Dishong is a Vincentian Commonwealth scholar who received her PhD in 2010 from the University of Manchester with a thesis entitled Gendered Negotiations, Interrogating Discourses of Intimate Partner Violence. You will tell us what that means. Uh, she holds a BA First Class Honours from the University of the West Indies, Cavill Campus, and was one of two valedictorians in 2004. As recipient of a Wellcome Trust Fellowship, she completed an MPhil in Social Policy in 2007 at the Sir Arthur Institute of Social and Economic Studies, UE Cavill, with a thesis which focused on a uh, on masculinities and violence against women in Barbados. She was also awarded a postdoctoral fellowship from the Center of Gender Excellence at the University of Linköping, is that the correct Linköping. Name? Linköping yeah. yes. in Sweden in 2010. At present, Dr. Halima de Strong is a lecturer at the Institute of Gender and Development Studies, Nita Barrow Unit at the UE Cavill. Halima has published in the areas of violence against women, gender and language, feminist methodologies, her research interests include the sociology of gender and violence, feminist criminology, feminist epistemologies and methodologies, and Caribbean men and masculinity, uh, masculinities studies. So as I said, quite a mouthful, uh, Halima, and you're going to analyze that for us and uh, through the program tell us what that means. Sure. Well, I'd like to, to continue, begin, continue to, to, to say we had an interview, we, we, we did this before, yes. uh, right here in this studio. Yes. Um, and at that time, of course, you, you were a recent PhD, uh, you just mm -hmm. attained your PhD. Yes. Uh, you were talking about gender issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to ask you, let's pick up from there, uh, that was three or four years ago, time yes. flies. How have you evolved since oh. then? What have you learned as a woman? What have you learned as an academic? Um, wow. Sometimes I think we don't stop to reflect on that. Mm. And I guess this gives me an opportunity to think about that. I think it's been a short time. It feels as if it was just yesterday we spoke in this context, in this right. format. Um, I think since then I've had an opportunity to do some training in um, through the University of the West Indies in university teaching and learning. I think that was a big, big um, experience for me because it allowed me to kind of you know sit back and reflect on some of the teaching methodologies we apply since then I've been involved in out the outreach work of the Institute um, which involves sort of 
trying to do training every two years with persons from across the Caribbean doing work in gender and development studies. Um, I've been doing more research in the area of gender-based violence and a new area that I've started doing work on is on feminist methodologies, feminist epistemologies. Um, currently working on two edited collections, one on feminist methodologies in the Caribbean and one on um, um, interdisciplinary gender studies in the Caribbean and trying as well to put together a manuscript on um, gender-based violence in the Caribbean. So I think it's been an experience in terms of trying to, as a newer person within academia, to um, you know, make sense of what, what I want to do at, at this very early stage, and also to think n about how the work that you're doing is about the overall um, social development of the Caribbean and for me, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Because it, it made, last night I was trying to make the point, and we'll come to last night, night's lecture, the purpose of being involved in research and academia is for the overall development and building better futures, better societies in the Caribbean. So I'm hoping overall the work that I am involved in, in some way, mm -hmm. contributes to the development of, of the region. Do you think you have made progress over the past four years, <laughs> over the past four years in, in, in your area? Um, that, that in some ways, I feel it is frustrating, frustrating from the activist perspective in that you try as much as possible to, dis to engage, dis disseminate information, try to get people more conscious and to change sort of my mindset around gender inequality, violence against women. And my most, I would say, I'm, I'm sometimes worried about the fact that when you do get to speak in, in, in a forum to talk about violence, to try to change attitudes and so on, most of the people who attend are people who are already committed to change and who are already working on change. I think we have to do more work in getting into other spaces, engaging other individuals and getting a wider cross-section of people involved in doing activist work around in, um, social justice, equality and so on. Um, and I think for those persons who can lend a voice to changing and making better societies, we need more people to come forward. You know, because sometimes you can suffer from fatigue. The, the person sees you for the umpteen time and like, oh yeah, that's the woman yes. who talks about gender all the time. Correct. You Correct. know, um, it would be nice for people who come up to you afterwards and say, I'm, I really believe in what you're saying. I really am committed to change. I really believe in social justice to get involved. And not everybody has to be like the face of the movement, but I do feel we need more people to get the involved. Laborers are few. You need more yeah. hands in the vineyard. Where, where I am seeing my colleague, Dr. Tanya Haynes, we're working on a project, a it's research project in Barbados. She is Barbadian. She does a lot of activist work online. Yes. Um, she's involved. She was um, co-producer of an organization called Code Red for Gender Justice. Mm -hmm. And she's also um, co-founder of a feminist Caribbean network called Catch a Fire. Mm -hmm. And I think they've been doing a lot of work with young people across the region, most of whom have a sort of connection to the kind of online platform and, you know, sort of trying to raise, raise awareness in that forum. And this is not to say that they don't do work um, or, or offline, but you know they try to use that medium, and I think sometimes we don't recognize how much how engaged people are, not just young people, in terms of commenting on a number of soci sociocultural issues as they affect us in the Caribbean. So there have there have been shifts, there have been there has been progress, um, and that is encouraging, but I still think there is so much work to do. I think you know we we. Um, there was a period in the 80s and 90s when you saw more vis visibly in the public greater movement. You know, I, I would like to see in some ways that be revitalized. And Dr. Adams last night made a very good suggestion, and I'm hoping that people would be encouraged to take it forward. Even if we meet in small groups in different places to try to discuss and confront a range of issues, not necessarily, and try to make it as nonpartisan as possible. We need to be having other kinds of conversations, you know, um, hoping that that could happen. You mentioned Dr. Adams, yes. who is, of course, um, one of our icons, to use mm -hmm. a hackneyed word yes. now. But uh, he, he's in his 80s. Yes. He's one of our academics. He's written a mm -hmm. number of history books. Yes. Um, and he is from an era um, where I think uh, he is all, he, he comes from an era where he comes out of the colonial era. Yes. which is part of what you were talking about yes. yesterday. But I think Dr. Adams is one of those people who has 
sort of escaped, and, and, and because he's lived in England and because he's, mm -hmm. uh, he has reached this place in life, mm -hmm. he is able to see things from a different perspective, mm -hmm. um, and he understands mm -hmm. what was done mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. And he is one of those people who's actually responding mm -hmm. uh, by writing our story. Right. Uh, so we need, we, need, we need that as well, don't we? We need Absolutely. both sides. Absolutely. And I think it's encouraging to see more and more Vincentians being really focused on um, going uh, uh, and knowing more about ourselves. I think sometimes we, we, we see, we, we don't give credit to young people um, when they do get involved because there's so much we see that is wrong and we have to deal with that as well. It was a pleasure last night to, to, to meet Dr. Adams officially for the first time. I know of the work he's been doing over the years around the history of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and those stories have to be told. I think that's one of the ways in which we need to reconnect with our past, not just about in history. the period of emancipation. About the of history. Yes. And, and, and what I call heritage, which is yes. history distilled. Yes. Claiming this, yes. taming this, naming this mm -hmm. as your own. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. This yes. is, or this is part of who I am. Yes. My identity comes out of this. Uh, I think we, we're lacking in that, which mm -hmm. leads to the issues that you're talking about, the gender issues, mm -hmm. the violence against mm -hmm. women, the epistemic violence. Let's talk about that. You, you, <laughs> you, you brought up a word, a phrase, epistemic mm -hmm. violence, which mm -hmm. is one of the three areas of violence that you wanted to uh, mm -hmm. respond to. Yes. Epistemic violence coming out of, out of epistemology. Yes. Yeah, explain that for us. What, what is that? Okay. Well, epistemology really, a big word to, to, to simply say, it's about knowledge construction, how we construct knowledge about the world, um, how do we know what we know, the methods we use to kind of make sense of the world around us, um, kind of the, the trying questioning the kinds of knowledge claims that exist about the world. But really, epistemology is, is about the production of knowledge and sort of questions around how do we know what we, we know? know? How do we get, that, get to that point? Mm -hmm. And I think in some ways, knowledge is often presented as something that is um, on apolitical. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of work that looks at the politics of knowledge production, yes. which I think... not political. Not political, yes. right? Yes. Not precisely. There's been a lot of work that looks at the fact that knowledge is explicitly political. What does that it, mean? It, it, it means that it is knowledge, the way in which knowledge is sort of transmitted and disseminated and managed has a lot to do with the powers that be mm -hmm. in a society mm -hmm. at a given period mm -hmm. of time. So this idea of knowledge being innocent mm -hmm has been questioned is uh, uh, epistemological questions and they have been questioned in that for us in the Caribbean I think we have to be very concerned about that mm -hmm. because knowledge has been significantly managed mm -hmm. as part of the colonial so experience. So in other words uh, if I as a Jamaican or Vincentian uh, when it comes to gender mm -hmm. or sexuality mm -hmm. I think that it is wrong to be a homosexual mm -hmm. that has been taught to me. Absolutely. Uh, and not just not just innocently. It, not it, it, just it, innocently, and they 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 oh, different that black sources. black is inferior. And and for me, I think or that, that was I'm inferior. that is the big question. That is the big issue in terms of colonialism because it was black significantly because of the numbers of enslaved Africans that came as that that were forced to come yes. as laborers yes. under the enslavement system, yes. right? Um, and the way in which that sort of shaped. What we, what we think about what it means to be black in 2014 yes. in the Caribbean, yes. but not just black. Most non-European groups yes. were, were, were marginalized. Yes. We think about the genocide and the, the kind of expropriation of the lands of indigenous yes. peoples. Yes. We think about the way in which indentured laborers who then came during the post-slavery period, yes. how they were treated, the conditions under which they yes. existed. So the epistemology the epi says, says mm -hmm. that if I am to control you, I mm -hmm. need to make you think that you are a woman, are mm -hmm. inferior. Mm -hmm. I'm stronger than you. Mm -hmm. I'm the man. I That's think the, 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 the epistemology is about creating knowledge around that. Yes. That is yes. then... So all that is, right. is sort of like a, a, a classroom mm -hmm. where, where, where the teachers have been mm -hmm. those in power, mm -hmm. uh, those mm -hmm. with... But the epis just to say, um, the epistemology is about investigating how we have arrived at, at that, that. Yes, how we know, know what we know. How we know what we know, yes. basically. So when I talk about epistemic violence, 
I am, I'm not thinking necessarily of violence directly that is tangible and can be felt in terms of one perpetrating me might be perpetrating a form of direct violence against you. When, we talk, when I talk, spoke about epistemic violence, especially in relation to colonialism, I'm talking about this kind of cultural erasure, making invisible groups of people, denying sort of their, um, their way of thinking and conceiving the world, sort of the destruction of their religious, attempts at destroying their religious and cultural systems. That is a form of violence so. because it is the, it is, it, th those, those processes were used to justify why it was right so. and okay for so colonialism words, to, to, it is, to take it is, place. That, that negates the, the old nursery rhyme. Sticks and stones may, may break my bones, but words can never harm me. Oh, absolutely. Words do words. harm. And, words. and that is a part of violence, exactly. that is violent. And language is, is like a significant component of that because yes, yes. it is through language that a lot of these ideas are transmitted. Yes. The sort of um, destruction of la the language systems, we, the we, belief systems we and so on. we talk more about that yes. when, when we come back. This is Unrendered. We are at the end of our first segment. We are speaking with, chatting with, learning from Halima Dishong of Incension. PhD, who is a lecturer in gender studies at Cave Hill in Barbados. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.